Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about something awesome which Figma has introduced and that basically has expanded the flexibility of Figma to quite an extent. And you guessed it, I'm talking about widgets. So, you know, you can see your widgets here and one in the resources panel. And as you can see, the shortcut for the resources is shift I. So I'm just going to press that. In the resources, not only do you have widgets, but you have components as well. So you can see the components that you have. You can see all of the different types of uh, different files that you have. And then it's basically similar to the shift I box where we had the components panel, right? So now we have a specific dedicated location for it. I can also pin it so you can search for your components here. Then you also have your plugins here and you can directly just download the plugins from community. If you want here, you can search for a specific plugin if you want, like for example, Unsplash and do all of that stuff. But coming to today's video, which I have to talk about, we're gonna, talking, we're gonna be talking about widgets. <clears throat> and for the widgets, I wanna point out what these widgets are in general. So widgets are just different types of perhaps sometimes integration, sometimes small elements that you can not only just as plugins open in a window, but you can actually drag these into your file. So again, that's really awesome. Previously with plugins, we used to have these modal like structures, you interacted with them, and then obviously you did something on the page, but now you can actually do what you wanted to do with plugins by, and also introduce these elements or these items onto the actual page itself. And I wanna talk about some specific ones that I really find very useful. Uh, so the first one is the activity tracker. Now I'm just gonna place this here. So as you can see, I'm just gonna click it. It says add, I'm gonna add it. And then obviously you also see some of the details here. You can also copy the link if you want, but I'm just gonna go back here. So again, you can pin this as well if you want. So obviously if you have it somewhere here, and just drag it, it can be pinned. Again, if I'm gonna close it, it's not gonna be pinned. You can drag, you can pin it by clicking that icon. So now here we have the activity tracker. In this activity tracker, what we can do is, imagine you wanted to do an activity, let's say a time-based activity on a particular file, and you wanted to re-record that activity. So maybe the first one is brainstorming. So <clears throat> this is the activity that you wanna do, you're gonna play it. And once you're done with that, you're okay, you're in a nice stage, you can just click on pause and it's gonna tell you how long that activity lasted and from when to when. Similarly, you can say, now I wanna go into ideation or something and then you can do the same thing there. So again, this is really helpful when you wanna again, like just get an estimate of how much time you're spending on something and all of that stuff. So that's again, awesome. Obviously you have tons of plugins that you can explore here if you want. Uh, the other one that I wanted to point out, which is really great as well, is the navigate. So imagine you're here on the file itself, and I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna say this is gonna be our about page, and this is gonna be our home page, and I'm gonna put the navigate button here. So here we have the navigate button, and I can just uh, click on it to actually get the settings, and it's gonna take some time to actually load the icon. So here we have the button, I'm gonna say, I wanna direct to home. And then I'm gonna add a destination. So obviously I can just click on it and I can say this button, if I click on this button here, it's gonna take me here. So once I've done that, I can close it. And now if I'm, let's say somewhere here, I'm above and I click on it, as you can see, it's gonna take me and it's gonna zoom me into that particular location. Similarly, I can duplicate it if I want, again, just by pressing uh, op the option key. I can go here, select this, go to the settings. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be our about. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to the about and I'm gonna, first of all, <clears throat> just go ahead and say from selection. So now here we have our pages. I can click on about. It's gonna take me to the about page. I can click on home and it's gonna take me to home. So again, this is really amazing and it's extremely powerful. Some other things that you can do here is obviously adjust the speed and do a lot of these things in the pro feature, but I'm not really sure if you need it. I think what you have as a basic is really again, beneficial for you to use. So again, that's another interesting one. The other, now we're gonna talk about the Jira and the Asana uh, extension. So you can have a Jira extension. You would probably have to link your team for it. But again, these are really useful if you wanna again, create issues from design, you wanna import an issue. Similarly with the, Asa with the Asana one, you can again, just go here to Asana and pardon me. 
So again, as you can see, you can have create a new task, but obviously when you create a new task, it's gonna ask you to actually connect to your Asana account and you can do that too. So again, if you're already using tools like these, Asana, Jira, this is gonna be really helpful for you to bring these tools while you're working right within Figma. So again, that's really important. One other feature that I think is extremely important is the voice memo feature. So with the voice memo, you can actually have, for example, you created a homepage and now you wanna, let's say, give a description of what the homepage is, is gonna be like because maybe you made it complicated or maybe there's some critical detail that you wanna add. So now when you actually go ahead and add that, I'm gonna record myself, I'm gonna say, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start recording myself and it's recording again, as you can see, the time is going on. I'm gonna say, this is an extremely important homepage the problem with this homepage, whatever, whatever, and these are all the technical guidelines that you wanna follow when you're actually implementing the homepage. Once you're done, you can click on that and you can enter a title. Uh, listen to me, you devs, <laughs> or something. So you can have something like that. You can start over, you can hide the title and you can shrink it as well if again, you don't want it to occupy that much space. And if we play it, then you would again as you can see the time is going on again you, you can probably listen it homepage, slightly but yeah homepage, whatever, whatever, and the, so that's there that's really awesome one other thing that you can probably add is maybe specific teams actually have different types of processes they actually go to so imagine you have a process like again gather wire gather inspirations um and like talk to stakeholders and like yeah do research imagine you have all of these tasks you can actually just go ahead and add them and again you can edit them you can delete them and stuff and once you're done with them you can keep on checking them so again this actually helps you to keep a record of things obviously uh, once you have done it just a single time you can definitely go ahead and actually just reuse the same thing if you want in the different <clears throat> files that you have the only problem with this is like it's not again global in the sense of components so once we have that feature that's going to be much better but for now if you want to use it in a single file you can do that too so now we also have the alignment scale which i think is really important in the alignment scale uh you can have something like this uh where you can ask let's say especially useful in research so imagine you have a research like this i'm going to say that this is what do would you use this feature or something and then you can have different people vote on this so i'm gonna actually vote on this and all of that and someone can vote here and when i see the results i can click on the uh, re reveal results and that's going to reveal the results it's going to it's going to actually show where different people have actually voted and again it's going to be very useful i think if you're doing research like that to actually get a spectrum of opinion Another interesting thing that I want to review is the import PDF. So imagine like previously, obviously you weren't able to import PDFs, but now you can. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select a PDF and here's the PDF. I can say import all pages and it's going to import all the pages and it's going to place all of those pages here for me to review. So again, it's really awesome. You can import, let's say multiple pages about a presentation or something if you want. <clears throat> and once that's done, you can actually have a look at them. So again, I imported this PDF. As you can see, we have the um, an introduction to design thinking PDF and you can see all of the details here if you want to. So again, those are some of the powerful widgets that I wanted to talk about. I personally feel like this is gonna be a game changer in Figma. Figma already has a lot of game changers and this is just gonna enhance just that progress and the effort that the Figma community and obviously all the Figma team is actually making to keep this product multiple steps ahead of their competition. So again, props to Figma and it's really great. But if you have any questions, comments, or anything, definitely let me know and we can talk about this more. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Do subscribe and do hit the bell icon.